All right, welcome. Today is Thursday, January the 7th. We're at Spain Park High School AP Chemistry. Another exciting day talking about thermochemistry. And we talked yesterday or the day before well, that energy can be uh, used or transferred either as heat or as work. Work is generally as the gas expands, if it's pressure, the, the formula for work of a gas is pressure times change in volume. But for us in a normal situation, in a normal chemical reaction, there's not that much work done. And so we're going to be really focusing in on Q, which is the heat transfer. And we're gonna pretty much say that Q and E are gonna basically be the same thing. So we're talking about the energy of a system, the enthalpy and the energy are gonna pretty much be talking about the same thing. Now, this we're starting, uh, I posted some notes uh, that you can use. Um, I'm starting on page three. The notes that I gave you already were about on uh, the first two pages. But when we talk about enthalpy, okay, enthalpy, as you can just see right there, it just says the measure only the change in enthalpy the difference between the potential energies of the products and the reactants. Okay, so again, just like internal energy, we can't measure the amount of heat that's in an individual piece of paper. But we can measure changes in heat. Again, when the paper burns, how much heat is released on that. Again, so we're gonna, we're gonna consider the energy change and the enthalpy change to be the same. Okay, now it says that it is it's um, a state function. Oh, not delta. Now, a state function is kind of a weird concept, but it's kind of like if we're going to drive from here to Denver and go skiing. Okay? I could go a bunch of different routes. I could probably go through Dallas, then up and over. I could maybe go north first and whatever. So, and the mileage is going to be different based upon what path I took. However, if I'm just looking at my change in elevation, how we're about sea level here, and we're going about a mile high in Denver. And so the change in elevation is gonna be the same regardless of what route I take. That's what a state function is. It doesn't matter what pathway you take, the final answer is gonna be the same regardless of the path you take. And we're gonna see how that works as we start adding equations together and seeing how heats can add and subtract together. But you always will end up with the same final answer. It's a state function, that's what that means, okay? Now, enthalpy is defined as the, the heat exchange during a chemical reaction and it's going to be at constant pressure which when we do things in an open beaker that's pretty much everything's always going to be a constant pressure. Now we know, we know already endothermic, what, in an endothermic reaction, what happens to the temperature of the surroundings? It gets cold. Gets cold. In an exothermic reaction, the surroundings get hot. But again, we're not measuring, it's going to be opposite of what the system is doing. And that's where we can always look at these potential energy diagrams here. So in an exothermic reaction, if this is your potential energy, and this is reaction progress, it's always going to look like this. This is the energy of the reactants. This is the energy of the products. 
Does anybody know what that value is? Very good. It's the activation energy. What do you remember what that means? The energy required to start the reaction. The energy needed to start the reaction. Right now, this paper wants the bond with the oxygen in the air. And it does so, but very, very slowly at room temperature. Because most of the molecules that are hitting this paper do not have enough energy to overcome this energy barrier, the activation energy. Okay? So now it does burn. I think I've showed you this before. But if you look at one of my old college binders, they're very, very, very old. Okay? But the paper is all yellowed and on the edges, it actually looks like it's been in a fire because it is actually slowly burning. Because in the air, we know that to temperature, there's an average kinetic energy. Some molecules are moving fast, some are moving slow. So every once in a while, every once in a blue moon, something hits this and it's got enough energy. Some of the fast molecules hit and it actually reacts but it's very slow because it's got a high activation energy. So what do we do to make this paper burn? No, we don't have a catalyst. Catalyst is another substance. You heat it up, you put a fire to it. And that gives these corner molecules enough energy to react and make it up over the hill. Now when they make it up over the hill, then they're gonna give off this energy right here. This is my delta H of the reaction. That's the heat of the reaction. And in this case, it's going to be negative because heat's being released. So I'll go ahead and label this as the activation energy. That's the energy needed to start the reaction. Every, every reaction has an activation energy. Now those are the ones that just, you put two things together, they immediately react. Immediately react. They're the ones that are gonna have a low activation energy. Ones you have to have, kind of heat up to get going, those have a higher activation energy. However, once we get the little corner lit, then as the heat is being released by the chemical reaction, that goes to heat up other molecules and they begin reacting faster and faster, and so we start seeing bigger and bigger and bigger flames. And so anytime that burns, it's just that heat's being released. Now, if I turn the paper this way, it slows down. I mean, if I start burning it right here, if I go here, it burns fast. But if I do this, it burns more slowly. Why? It's fire. I didn't hear that one. It's like the that the hair is rising up and going this way and not coming back in to, to spur the reaction on. Okay, so we need that, we need to catch this delta H, we need to catch that energy to go back to cause more reaction to occur. Okay, so enthalpy is a measure of this heat change right here. Now, what would it look like in an endothermic reaction? What's it gonna look like here? These aren't all the nodes. Are they? Yeah. Well, no, I don't think they exactly like I'm drawing. But what, what's the endothermic gonna look like compared to this one? Products are gonna be higher. Products are gonna be higher. You still are gonna have an activation energy, but the products will be higher energy. This is still your energy of activation, E sub A. This is going to be your delta H of the reaction right here. That's, that's always the difference between the reactants and the products. Doesn't matter how much gains in the middle, doesn't matter the process, it's a state function. Doesn't matter how much you have to put in, how high it gets, all the different things that form in the middle. 
just the, the final, the reactants and the products, the difference in their energies. All right, so now we can just look at, it says, it can be calculated in several different ways. Okay, so there are like five ways to calculate delta H, and that's what we want to look at today. So, can you, is that still visible? And we'll just do this. Five ways to calculate delta H. And the first way is just from stoichiometry. The delta H of a reaction is generally going to be given in kilojoules per mole. So what does that make that a conversion factor between? If you have the units on it or kilojoules per mole, what's it a conversion factor between? Those of you are thinking overthinking. If it's got units of kilojoules per mole, what are the what's it a conversion factor between? Energy, Energy kilojoules, and Mole. no moles. moles. Whatever the two units are on a substance, that's what it's a conversion factor between. So when we have density as grams per liter, it's a conversion factor between mass and volume. Miles per hour, I'm going 70 miles per hour. That's a conversion factor between miles and hours. Anytime you have two units on something, it's a conversion factor between them. So I can do stoichiometry by just by setting up my problem. So if I look at that sample problem on page four, the next page, I have KOH. KOH is going to go, this is solid going to go into water and make KOH aqueous plus 43 kilojoules. Now the fact that the kilojoules is on the right hand side of the equation, is this going to be an endothermic or an exothermic reaction? Exothermic. How do I know that? Because it's releasing the energy. Because it's releasing the energy. It's, it's producing the energy like a product. This is an exothermic reaction. Okay, so it says I have 14 grams of KOH that's going to dissolve in the water. Okay, that I'm looking at the third part of the uh, question. What is the enthalpy change for the dissolution? And that what's that dissolution a fancy word for? Um, dissolving. Dissolving. Okay, for the dissolving of 14 grams of KOH. Well, what do you think I need to do? Um, molar mass of uh, KOH. And what do I do with the molar mass of KOH? You multiply it by uh, the molar ratio. Mm -hmm. What do we always start with? 14 grams. 14 grams. Okay, so how can I use molar mass here? And by the way, the molar mass is going to be 16 and 1 is 17 plus 39 is going to make 17 and 39 is 56. Okay. And so